Yes, geezers, Spezzy here. It's patch day. We are playing our first game of the pro ladder. I finished like 70th last season, so we're sending the pro ladder. We're starting with Invigorate. We've just played one game and I had a 30 point talk. So let's see in the pro ladder if we can do the same. Why am I playing Invigorate? Well, talk has been a card that's in devotion for a little while, but hasn't really had the support. But with Saskia obviously being a card now, with Milva getting nerfed, but more importantly, some of the buffs we've had, particularly to this Hawker support, this deck looks legit. The Hawker support, it's probably the best bronze card in the game right now, honestly. Um, really overpowered. It's four provisions. You guys know I love my four provision cards. Three power. You're boosting an allied unit in hand by one. But if the unit was boosted, already boosted, you boosted by three instead. So we're going to be buffing Torque with this, of course. Torque doubling down on all of our hand buffs. Uh, putting that hand buff onto another card. Hopefully a Sheldon or another card that makes use of those points. The more just the point value. The more, more than just their point value. So this is 12 points. If you can use this on Torque. And then the talk buffs your Sheldon, for example. That's 12 points, six of which is carry over. Pure carry over on a four provision card. Absolutely filthy. Insanely, insanely good card. So definitely looking forward to playing this um, and seeing how good it is exactly. The big difference between this deck and the previous Invigorate decks as well is the leader ability changed. It's now got four boosts. Three charges. That's 12 boosts in total. Previously, it was, I think, what, five boosts twice. And now it's four times, three times. So we've gone from 10 boosts total to 12 boosts total. One of those boosts, uh, you get one more boost on, on Torque, one more in Sheldon. So that's already like four extra points alone. But also, the, you have to have less units in your hand, or you can have less units in your hand when you use the leader ability, which really increases the odds of your Torque buffing your Sheldon, or your Torque buffing another hand buff card, which in our case, we're using the Watcher of the Valley. Watcher of the Valley is a bonded card that got printed in the latest expansion that hasn't really seen any play. Obviously, Mushy Truffle is not an option because we're playing Devotion because of Torque. But the reason I'm playing this card is... We've got Invigorate, we've got Hawker Smugglers, Dunker, all the hand buffs with Sarissa, Ithleen. So getting any buffs on extra cards, um, getting any buffs of cards that make use of this extra points, extra hand buffs, convert hand buff points into extra points is good. And also, Saskia can pull one of these and then you can actually just play the other one from hand. So let's say we don't use Saskia around one, we use Saskia around two, and she pulls a Watcher of the Valley and I've got a 10 point Watcher of Valley in hand ready to go. It's like playing a Bronze Sheldon. Pretty damn cool. Again, you might be wondering, like, Spes, is Saskia really worth it? We're not playing engines, guys. Saskia is very OP. I think she's going to get nerfed in a month. Um, she's going to thin our deck th from three bad bronzes. She's going to play for probably, like, somewhere around, like, 18 to 20 points. Card's just very good and gives us also just a lot more staying power in either round one to try and win the round or in round two if we're getting bled. Also, in terms of the hand buff cards, the ones I've chosen are all hand buff cards, which can buff talk directly i'm talking ithleen buffing it by four i'm talking sarissa buffing it by two she got buffed as well by the way dunker bountiful harvest smugglers we've got one sorceress couldn't fit the other one i've got circles i've got also uh the hawk sports finally we've just got one dwarf uh for our um one dwarf one witcher for our lovely Saskia. And we're going to be wanting to play Saskia in the front row because of our Hawker Smugglers. And I know, again, I can already see the comments. Guys, Spes, you're using Hawker Smuggler with Saskia. Like, isn't that anti-synergy? That Look, it's not ideal. But both these cards are just insane. You just have to play both of them, in my opinion. Finally, I guess the last thing to touch on is the game plan of the deck. We're going to try and win round one, ideally. But most likely, we're going to lose round one. Uh, we're just going to maximize as much carryover. This deck is going to be a lot better going second. Um, if you do go first, you could try and commit your Saskia to win round one. But it might be a better idea to try and save Saskia for round two to defend the bleed. And then just go into a short round with your talk. Let's give it a bloody spin. We're on Pro Ladder, as I say. I'm doing this in one take. So you're just going to see all of the games that we play and see how we get on. I'm streaming live on Twitch right now. In fact, when this video goes live, I'm also probably going to be live on Twitch. Uh, at twitch.tv forward slash specimen. So make sure you come hang out and see how we are getting on on patch day. Got a deck already built for every single faction. So in the comments also let me know if there's any cards from the latest patch you want me to try out. All right, we're doing this in one take, guys. We're just going for it. How's it, how's it going, chat? Chat's now on the screen. Uh, how was that, chat? Can we get, get a rating out of 10 for the intro? I would give it like, I would give it like a, uh, a five. It started off pretty badly, but I was too lazy to start again. A six? Okay, I'll take a six. All right, first game of the season. We're in Pro Ladder, remember? So 
The people we're playing against finished top 500 last season. I finished like 70th or so. This is the first competitive season as well, so I'm quite tempted to go for a top 64 finish to play in qualifiers again. Oh, also the making a bomb here, by the way, is just here for one of the tags on our Saskia. Um, yeah. We've got the Sheldon. Obviously, Torque is guaranteed because we're playing Devotion. Sheldon is in hand, which is fantastic. Simless, ideally, is going to be played onto our Bounceful Harvests. We could also keep up, keep the option of playing him onto, like, Rebukes and such. Um, I mean, I doubt it. I guess we just ditch a Making a Bomb. Could be awkward. We find double Hawker support. That is beautiful. Uh, we want to win round one because it's probably clogged. So maybe the Circle of Life goes. If we also hit Bountiful Harvest, that doesn't clog us. Like, obviously, it's a carryover card. But we're looking for maybe the Saskia, for example. Um, honestly, pretty bad hand. We don't have any of our carryover engines. Ditching the circle is controversial for sure. Because uh, we could have maybe just played uninteractive. But we don't have any tool punish to deal with Colgrim. So definitely want to try and get round control. And sure enough, it is Clog. I am also going to be playing Clog myself with the new 4-point Roach. If you guys are interested, you can look out for that a little bit later. We're just going to start off with Ithleen and hope the Ithleen buffs are talk, I think. Uh, we don't want to play our... I guess we could play a Hawker support, actually. We just use a leader charge to begin with. That sounds pretty smooth. So let's buff our Sheldon. Let's buff our Tork. Let's buff the Dolblathana, or the Sorceress of Dolblathana. And we just have one more card to choose, which I guess we go for Simless. Because he's the most likely we hold on to. It's a gold card. We want to concentrate our, our points into our golds. So Tork buffed our Ithleen. And then we're going to go for a Hawker support, I think. Onto our Tork. We buff Simless again. So the reason I decided to go for the Hawker support as the option here is what we want to try and do with our leader is we want to try and get all the extra buffs from Tork onto this Sheldon. Um, so I don't really want to play the Ithene until like I've got less cards in hand pretty much, right? Mm, a superb specimen. So I could like rebuke this twice. It's obviously just not popping off too much. Uh, Sarissa, while she has Harmony, we're looking for the Death Blow to get guaranteed hit on to our sh onto our talk i guess we could we don't want to play our sorceress either one two three four five six we could like leader charge again and play sorceress down honestly i think it's fine usually what you'll find is i use my leader um as late as possible but in this situation i'm trying to play around clock cards and you get subaz with the sub on Twitch. Thank you so much for the three month sub, man. I appreciate it, mate. Well, lad, I appreciate the support very much. With a prime sub as well. Thank you, mate. So, Sarissa does still have a death blow. She just also has that extra ability where if you don't get the death blow, she's just going to boost a random card. Whereas the death blow, you get to choose. So, it's very similar to a circle of life with a four point body and some sexy thighs, mate. She's green, but that's fine. We don't discriminate. So Clog is definitely looking pretty hot this season. If someone asked me to fix the Salamander deck, yeah. So all you want to do to fix... Oh, that's, a, that's unfortunate, isn't it? That's pretty unfortunate, mate. What you want to do to fix Salamander is you want to play... Um, you just ditch the Sewer Raiders, pretty much. You want to play Savvy Hucksters. So, I mean, I guess we go for this now. It's kind of sad that I'm not going to get a hand buff card, but we maybe get a Waylay. It's like another example of when we're not playing multiple sorceresses. We just don't really have a good way of buffing them once they're actually down on the board. It's the same reason I'm not playing the hand buff dwarf for invigorate, but uh, but rather just the point slam mercenary. Where the hell is the mercenary in this deck? I'm sure we're playing one. There it is. I can see it. So they play the other witcher adept, which I can actually kill this one with the rebuke. At the very least, we need to try and get the leader from them here, really. Because we're going to have a real tough time otherwise. We're not too worried about... I guess we could be worried about getting to it because of Reince as well. Right? Reince on Torque is going to be a bit of a disaster, to be fair. Remember, we are playing against top meta decks. This is going to be a top of the meta deck. And we're playing against probably a pro player. Someone that not only finished top 500, but has also woken up on patch day to play the game. And is playing Clock. <laughs> this person's taking it very seriously, you know? However, they have just buff, uh, try, tried to clog us with a token, which, uh, yeah, that doesn't work, my friend. Unlucky, son. 
One, two, three, four, five cards in hand still. So we just go for the other Hawker support and talk. Like honestly, there's no point in passing. Even though we don't really have the reach, we probably just would rather take the, the round down a couple of cards. Um, we're just going to get battered otherwise in a short round if we give them round control. They still have Sunset Wanderers, they still have Leader. But yeah, this is a bit of a chunky similar. So unfortunately, our, our, our Sheldon's managed to avoid most of the buffs. And uh, yeah, no tool punish, obviously, playing Devotion Squirtel. So this uh, 13 point adept is just ticking along. It's just ticking nicely along. So this time they actually clog a Hawker support, which is like just a decent card for us, but it's still worth it for them to clog. If they thin the sunset, we're probably forced to pass. If they don't, I'm going to probably try and stay. I think I've got to try and stand around, guys. I don't think we can really justify passing. We probably use another leader charge. Because it, I mean, it actually ends up giving us a couple of extra points. Come on, buff the Sheldon, man. Thank you. And then Simulus is just going to be enough for it. Like, we need round control here, but more importantly, we need round control to, and at, or at least to get the Sunset Wanderers out of them, right? We can't not win the round and also not get Sunset Wanderers from them. So they pass. Sheldon here is going to play for, uh, what, 20 points, which gets us there by five. Simulus puts us at, th like, I feel like Sheldon is maybe the better play. Having said that, Sheldon's also going to make more use of the carry replays there. Is Simless double circle enough, actually? That is the question. That would be insane. That would be so good. It's got to be, right? We're losing a point. We're at 26. This puts us at 36. Double circle, five each. So we're basically at 46. That's enough for it. Simless puts us to 36. Double circle. Yeah, beautiful, mate. That is flipping glorious. So we might look in the circles to give us some agency over our decisions and look at that we high rolled the first one as well look at the carryover mate we've got a 24 point talk and a 17 point sheldon and we do it by one bloody point mate never in doubt guys right come on I, I'm, I'm a mathematist did i not tell you already <laughs> flip it mathematist <laughs> so at this point the decision is what the hell do we bloody do well we certainly mulligan the the guardian and, and the waylay i think it's fair to say then again, the, the, maybe the mercenaries are bigger, more important mulligan. Hmm. This is our Saskia play, right? Maybe, mate, maybe we're just supposed to do some kind of stupid bleed, right? Maybe we could have even kept the golem. We just accept, that, like, this matchup is dreadful, mate. But we've got to bleed them, right? We can't just like let them have Snowdrop, Leader, Sunset Wanderers, Reince, Colgrim. We just lose on the spot, mate. Mine, my coins Go kiss a dog its tail. So there was an argument to maybe keep the Golem, as I say. Um, just because we can't get actually clogged with the Guardian and we're going to lose the round anyway. But it's fine. We're kind of just hoping for like a Saskia top deck round three. Maybe we can hold on to Sheldon Talk. It seems pretty unlikely. Obviously, getting clogged with... We don't have that much consistency in this deck, so... Watch with the Valley does a nice job here. There's also a consideration to, like, slam jam the Talk, right? And just see if we can get out the round, but I, I think that's a pretty poor attempt. At the very least, clog with Diplo. Um, I mean, Diplo makes sense to an extent. It's just a decent card. Maybe if you're playing Vigo in particular, this would make sense. Otherwise, if you're not playing Vigo, it's probably more likely to play Tortoise, for example, right? Without the assimilate value. But if you're playing something like a Vigo, uh, like if you play lots of special cards, your Vigo does turn into a clog card of sorts, right? Especially if you're playing Mentor, you can hire all Mentor off Vigo, but it's not typical. Bear in mind this deck did get an extra provision as well, so maybe they're just trying to squeeze in an extra gold card. And polarize the deck more by playing an extra four provision bronze card.
Okay. Maybe that was the time to pass to get their Sunset Wanderers, but again, I think, like... Honestly, that could have been the time to pass, right? Maybe they would just play Snowdrop, keep the Sunset, keep the leader, though. Wouldn't have got ahead, I suppose. Could have been a pass. They're playing Mena, which is also not typical. But that would also make sense why they're playing Diplos, right? Okay. They find some carryover. Here's the Sunset Wanderers. But yeah, I mean, you can see we're just in a bad spot still. I think this matchup is just unfortunately uh, never really going to go fantastically well for us. One thing to consider if we're down a card, though, is that their... Colgrim ticks less, I think, right? The question is if we actually pass or not. Um... It depends what they commit. Let's go. Uh, it's a pretty weird decision to slam the leader here. But this has kind of worked out. But yeah, Reance is going to absolutely wreck us. No snowdrop played from our opponent either. So see if there's maybe not going to be as many points as it might at first seem. It means they didn't find snowdrop. I mean, we've pretty much done all we can, really, right? I, I don't think it's particularly reasonable to, to to play another card when we're 26 points down. We play a talk and we're level, you know? Having said that, we do have two banger cards here. We could, in theory, slam jam. Maybe they've just kept, like, mate, you know what? If we pass, how are we winning, right? We've got to go for it, mate. We've got to bloody go for it, mate. Reince cucks us. It sets our talk to zero. Sheldon only answers defender. So their Colgrim still ticks. We've been clogged, so we're probably not even going to find our cards. This is just dreadful, but here we go. What we... Uh, mate, Reince now? Imagine Rico's like bottom card. They can't do it. Oh, let's go! 2-0, baby! 2-0. Actual 2-0. They, the, they kept the bad cards. They didn't believe I would do it, mate. They didn't believe I would do it. But I'm made of different gravy, mate. I'm made of different gravy, mate. That's a pretty big mentor. Let's go! One point both rounds, mate. The 2-0 of dreams. Oh, let's go, man. I can't believe that. Okay. That actually worked. We were in such a bad spot, but we just, we found the line, mate. If we pass, we lose, right? We had to go for it. All right, let's go again, man. <laughs> let's go. Don't think our opponent should have passed round one, to be honest. They kind of gave us a win con, but... And they also shuffled, <laughs> exactly, they shuffled Colgrim and Reince back with the leader. The, the leader gave us a lot of intel that they had a really strong hand, right? They would have always never used the leader at that point. They wouldn't have shuffled, I think you always play Snowdrop if you've got it, if you're slamming leader, because it's just not that good later on, right? Okay, we're up against a Milva player. Interesting. Obviously, Milva having been nerfed, but still pretty reasonable option for Gorilla Tactics. Well, definitely for Gorilla Tactics. Now, we've got the Saskia this time, which is the key card. Um, we definitely want a Mulligan, the Dwarven Mercenary, and the Cat Witcher, because they're both options off Saskia. We definitely don't want a Mulligan, the Hawker support. And there's no point Mulliganing the Smuggler, because it's such a good card. We need to start setting up for our Simless. Double circle in hand means we probably just Mulligan the Harvest and go Simless Harvest through. I think finding a Watcher of the Valley is also pretty fantastic here. The, the question really we have for Saskia is how do we open? Do we just open with the Saskia herself? I think so, yeah. Now listen, this obviously isn't ideal, but there was a 50-50 we hit a Smuggler there if it's a human. 
Like, this is the downside of Saskia in this deck. It's just this one card. But we could also play the Smuggler to try and stop that happening first. But then the Smuggler was just going to die anyway, right? Uh, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six units in hand. I don't play a Dryad either in the deck. A Bronze Dryad. You could play Matron in this deck. We ended up cutting Matron though for making a bomb for the tags. But like the Cat Witcher could become a Matron. Uh, you need Cat Witcher for the tag too. Yeah, this this um, Hawker support got buffed and also the leader got buffed. So this is probably one of those ones where we maybe don't win round one, but we do have the, the Saskia applying some pressure. I have one, two, three, four, five cards in hand. I guess we just wait a turn on the Hawker support, Hawker Smuggler. We haven't actually got the shot, the talk buffed. I guess we just do this then. And I should have played in the front row, right? Once this, once this Hawker Smuggler gets a buff, I'll play it. But I could have just leaded. One, two, three, four. So if I want a leader around one, this is the time to do it. And the hand's pretty good to leader, right? We hit a Watcher of the Valley, which like Saskia's... If we... Saskia is going to pull an elf. The question is how... Mate, we might just fall leader, honestly. I think I just... I'm trying to win round one here, right? I think leadering round one is kind of fine. I have an engine which gets protected. Now the question with Dunker is... I don't think we click her, mate. The plan is to slam the Watcher of the Valley, probably, to win the round. It's obviously weird to use a, a, a full leader around one on this coin, but it is just carry over. So the next question is, do we play or pass? And I think we just always pass here. Like, this leader didn't really cost us anything. We just, it's still, ha it's just pure carry over, right? Admittedly, it would have been better on a Sheldon. But also, we don't actually want to thin the Saskia because it's a Watcher of the Valley that she would be thinning next, right? So now, like, we're just in a position where we're just going to try and get the shortest round possible. We could Mulligan Circle of Lives um, to try and find Sheldon, for example. There's also better carryover cards than these. No, a Glace is just like a much more expensive version of Sheldon that doesn't have removal. And also a much more expensive version of Watcher of the Valley, if you get the bonded. So it's looking like an Alza deck. And this is the difference about Milver. If this was a 5 strength unit, they wouldn't just be able to do this without Milver getting cut. It's pretty hard, right? Probably better remo uh, removal targets. I don't hate the sound of going Ithleen. I want to try and save our juicer plays, right? Sarissa, we want to try and target Talk. Yeah, Watcher of the Valley is just like a bonus shield in here. Pretty cool. Pretty good. So we have the option to pass here. With all this carryover. But I think like it might just be better to like keep pushing here and this carryover becomes less, but we shorten the round. We could also just go Bountiful Harvest here. There's lots of good targets. Could alternatively play Sarissa first and just hit something random, right? We can we can try and get Alza out, yeah, for example. That's one one line we can get leader charges. But also we've got carryover for round three. But because 
all this carryover is concentrated onto a few cards. It also makes sense to shorten the round, right? Like, even if we lose a card, we're still shortening the round, so it's not necessarily a negative for us. Okay, so they're banishing my uh, spells. I can go call for Ithene, for example, right? And just try and find Simless. Sim I mean, Ithlene is just carryover, right? Whereas Simless is carryover, but also point slam. It's kind of an interesting decision to make here. So like you can see this card already was just fine, right? It was a seven, but it sets up this this big chungus. And ideally in this deck, we're gonna thin one with Saskia, I think, and then slam the other from hand. That's the, that's the logic, right? And even if you don't, they're just four point plays off Alza. Like matrons, a lot of the time play for four points off Alza. Oh, off Sesky, sorry. This if thing is just not very good round three, similar says. That's not the best buff. I was kind of looking for anything else but that. But I'm also like probably slamming the Watcher of the Valley still. This round or not, as it turns out. Speed hasn't exactly gone that well, has it? We do have, like, big Chungus cards in hand, but they still have an Alza. Yeah, they've been lemming using Xavier onto our cards. So we decided to take pass now, because if we play another card... That was also another. Did we get another neutral charge or was that just a bomb? I don't know. But if we use another. If we play another card, they're going to use Simless, right? They get all the carryover on Seer. It just doesn't really work out very well for us. We still managed to shorten the round. Double Orb is obviously looking pretty dodgy. Like, I could have had Circle for that round as well. Double Harvest Roller. Sheldon's just bad here, right? Like, it's literally just a mulligan target, I think. Ah, is it? I mean, this is maybe the hand. I'm obviously hoping to find Simless. Maybe just keep this. There's still like th four hand buff plays potentially here, right? But yeah, I mean, we didn't get rid of the Saskia, which is a bit of a yikes. Spit it out already. We can actually find the Watcher of the Valley, guys, off of, uh... <sighs> we find Watcher of the Valley off of Bountiful Harvest Rope. And we've got four of them. We have one of this, maybe. This guy's a real barrel of laughs on patch day playing Milva still, right? <laughs> Only in Pro Ladder, mate. Only in Pro Ladder. New patch? Yeah, I'm gonna play I'm gonna play Clog and Saskia, our first experience. Our talk in the last game was 30, but he he can still get bigger, right? We pick far left with harvests. This is a pretty good kill. So if we just go for the sorceress first. See what we get. So we could just take the orb and kill it. However, 
guys. We're playing hand buff. We take the harvest. Oh my god, we did the thing, guys. Step and let us settle this. Do we just slam this now, or is it too soon? It's probably too soon, right? So Archer here plays as a seven. But I don't want to hit this here because it's maybe my best target. I don't think the Watcher of the Valley is that sus, right? Like, I don't think my... Oh, I guess I did already play one. Maybe it is sus. But I want the biggest tool punish possible with this thing, right? I guess you could argue at this point I don't even want more points on it because I can just get the extra hand buffs on Sheldon. So maybe at this point I'm supposed to just play it. But it's only playing is 8 damage and it's 14. I just believe in the high rolls, man. So here... We have a 5 point play or a 7 point play. The 7 point play buffs our, our, our Sheldon. Whereas, I mean, the War Dance is better if it buffs Talk and then Sheldon, right? But that's kind of risky, so I guess we just buff Sheldon. We buff Talk. Then Sheldon. This would be four points of hand buff and five. Whereas this is. I think this is like. Just better play over it. On average, it's pretty close though. Like the 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 two fast food one. If we play it, fast talk plays as a five, but then we get two extra points of buff. And then if it's on here, two extra points. So wasn't it just actually never never that much better? I think it was just like pretty much never better. It was like at best the same, I think. Yeah, they can kill the Watcher here. Yeah. It's risky, but... Was Watcher the middle card in that one, Antoine? Oh, Scal, mate. Scal's getting wrecked, right? So we can't actually finish him off with Sheldon, but we can finish him off with the Watcher. So I guess we just take the Watcher now. Ah, I say that. It's 14 damage, bruv. It's not even that good, right? We can finish him off with Sheldon, right? If we just get a damage card. Oh, this Sabotar, man. It's still a thing. Didn't hit scale rippers. We're pretty far behind, guys. You might have noticed. <sighs> I don't know. Maybe what I could have done in in the previous round was mulligan. Actually, mulligan my hand buff cards, bled further, and then just tried to top deck them. It's kind of clowny though, right? This is, I think, it, on reflection, slamming Saskia was a misplay in round one. I'm just overcommitted, right? For a deck that wants a short run three. Don't you fret about me. You take care of myself. Uh oh, guys. Oh, fine. So yeah, unfortunately, no more hand buffs on offer, which is pretty rough, right? Damaging scale does does very little. I suppose it gives us some insurance if this. We 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 should probably just play this at this point, but I'm trying to greed it. I think we need to greed it, right? The thing is, if they kill this card, this Watcher of the Valley in the back row, we're pretty screwed, right? 
Like, are we ever winning here? Do we need to greed? Because this can play for more points, right? I mean, maybe it's maybe it can't. I might be throwing because I lose. If they kill my Watcher of the Valley, I lose. Well, eight points. Killing Watcher makes a lot of sense because I played one from deck and run one route. But my logic is I need to greed everything. Well, I mean, they've got spores. I think we lose, guys. We definitely need to greed now. Okay, we've got one more one more try with this deck, one more game to play. See how we do in the last one. I didn't kill the Watch of the Valley, at least. So we can see our big Chungus Watch of the Valley. But uh yeah. Hasn't gone hasn't gone so well, has it? At least we've got the big balls finisher. Not too surprised. I think this seemed winnable, to be fair. Last card Gord probably wrote. Um, the Saskia play from me in round one was an overcommitment on red coin. If we were uh, uh, on blue coin, rather. If we were on red coin, Saskia play would have been fine. But this is actually just me misplaying, to be fair. Deck didn't seem so bad. It didn't seem unwinnable. Obviously, the spores in their deck played for an incredible amount of points. Very difficult to bleed Mushy Truffle as well, right? Truffle's on the board. It's to let it for round three. I could have made some risky mulligans once I was in that position. How is Saskia weak in this deck? She's like 18 points. Just great. It's like an 18 point card. Like It's not like a Saskia in other decks, but it's still an 18 point card. It's insanely good, right? So we're mulligan the Mercenary. Um, we've got double harvest, so there's like no real point of mulliganing double harvest. I guess we mulligan a smuggler to try and find off Saskia. Probably not, because we would just hit Hawker support anyway. Mm. I suppose we get rid of a harvest. Humans are random. Yeah, but so what? Your Saskia pulls one bad card. It's still good. The card is just insanely good, right? So like putting hitting one bad card doesn't really do much to make the card bad, basically. One, two, three, four, five. We have a, like we could slam Saskia. We do need to try and compete in round one. Four P elves, mate. Guys, Saskia is overpowered. <laughs> Trust me, you need a Saskia in this deck. The card is insane. It thins. It plays for like 18, 20 points, despite pulling junk. And you want to pull Watcher of the Valley, right? That's, that's the idea. Like you pull one from Saskia and you play the other from hand. I misclicked. I gotta hurry up, chat. Ah, this is this is wrong as well. I played this wrong. I was too busy molding it, chat. <laughs> Sorry, Prake. I'm not actually molding at you, but you get what I mean. Yeah, I'm trying to play around Clog, right? Which is why I realised I misplayed with my buffs. Okay, we've got the second smuggler. We, we need to get the dunker. Oh, they play the box, man. This is not looking too hot with our, with our opponent playing locks here. I mean, I'm not trying to say that like this deck is going to be a meta break or anything like that. It's hand buff, right? It's 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 probably not going to be great, but it's certainly not going to be terrible. And um, you certainly want to play Saskia to have a chance, I would say, of doing much of anything. So I misplayed with my leader charges pretty significantly, and also our opening hand is just weak. And I'm missing a lot of the cards that I would uh, I would like. Boost 9 by 2, 
damage unit for anything on the row. Just bloody hell, these were bad. I mean, maybe we just take the middle card as a three, try and buff the torque. I don't know. Wow. Okay. Like, there's maybe an argument to have played Saskia to try and contest the round. But yeah, opening hand, definitely high on the RNG. Because I've not got Watcher of the Valley, I've not got uh, Sheldon either, right? And this is another reason to play the Watcher of the Valley. Just increases the odds of you having a card in round one you can use. So we play deep enough to force the leader, which is pretty good. We can also probably continue to just like play the circle of life here. I guess we just lose the point on the Mage Assassin for the extra carryover. We could also use Dunker, turn, switch Dunkroft to kill the Adept and then buff the talk. Kind of like that line. Here we get Sunset Wanderers, unless they can draw a card. And I would say we've probably done enough here to pass. Oh, we didn't get Sunset? Okay, I mean, we just play another card. We need to get the Sunset from them, right? I mean, who knows? Maybe we could actually win the round still, right? I imagine they pass. <laughs> okay, they don't pass. They probably should have passed. I mean... Do we pass, guys? Do we actually pass? Fortunately. They probably should have passed themselves, right? Could put myself in an awkward spot, but yeah, I, I feel like I need round control in this matchup. Maybe Saskia Slam was fine. But I like honestly giving Saskia a hand buff is uh, pretty cool. It's the kind of thing we did need to do. We find the shell, then we'll just keep the hand. Then we have two hand buff cards, plus a card that wants to get hand buffed. And again, like putting all these points onto Saskia, like just condensing points into a big goal, is the kind of thing the deck does want. Obviously, we'd rather put it onto a Sheldon or onto like Watcher of Valley potentially to get like. Actual value off the carryover plays, but it's a bit of a bummer we missed this. I guess we just take the uh, Sheldon here. To get ahead. I'm quite surprised by their line of play here, to be completely honest. I guess they're trying to bleed my, my cards. Which does make sense, I suppose. Unfortunately, they do get our last card. So of course we're just playing the talk here. Keep Saskia. Because also, talk's not even that good because of Reince, right? In fairness. Like this looks disastrous. Probably not all that bad. The Saskia buffed is cucking the Reince very hard, right? Very, very hard indeed. Okay, the hand is awkward. We can keep the Cat Witcher. We can certainly keep the Hawker Smuggler. Uh, the Hawker Support, I guess. Not great. That kind of sorts it out somewhat. So we missed Simless. We actually drew pretty well though, right? 
So we have Double Thunder Sorceress, we have Mercenary, we also have Smuggler of Saskia. Oh! That's one of the worst cards we could have found. That is a chunga Saskia. Is it enough to, to do the ting? Imagine they float the Colgrim as well, man. I just get him with the Cat Witcher. Ooh. I guess this kind of made no sense, right? It's the Hawker support. Playing a three now. I guess I misplayed. So I sequence incorrectly. Unfortunately, which is a bit of a bummer, isn't it? Looks like we win, though. We have to miss the armor, or do we just win? Oh, what an easy game, guys. Let's go. So, again, if we if this wasn't an immune card, the funny thing is this Reance would have played for, what, like 20 points more? 15 points more? Okay, so we went 2-1 on Pro Ladder on day one against players that finished in the top 500 last season. I do think this is a pretty optimized list for um, Saskia hand buff with Talk. Do I think it's going to be the best Skytel deck? Probably not. Like a Devotion Skytel deck always struggles. I do think it's legit though. I do think it got really significant buffs and I do think it's a pretty good deck to experiment with and have fun with. So I do hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you check me out on Twitch, Twitch.tv, Swarmhouse If you watch this far, please like the video. Comment down below if you watch this far. The secret word is... Uh... Meatballs. Mm, it's meatballs. GG jerks. Truly. Missing DMT. Yep. Oh, mate. Rippers. Unlucky, man. GG. Alright, guys. Uh, yeah. Thanks for watching the video. See ya.